Man, are you excited to be here? Man, I'm excited to be with you. Um, if I haven't had the opportunity to meet you, I'm Pastor Paul. I'm the lead pastor here. And yes, welcome to the best church on the planet. We're glad that you're here. For those of you who call church home, don't forget to take out your notes. We're a note-taking church, amen? We're going to get to that in just a minute, but I want to celebrate as a family. I think it's important that we celebrate every once in a while. Would you agree? All right, you guys like a good party? I like celebrating together. We get to celebrate somebody that's in the life of our church. He's one of our deacons. Um, his name is Tom Ostenick, and he serves on our board. He helps make wise decisions for us as a church as we're continuing to grow and move forward. This morning, I got a text from him. And for those of you who might be aware, we have been praying. He's been going through chemotherapy. It says, well, let me see here. I, I, me I messed it all up, but here we go. All right, tremendously praising God this morning. Got PET scan results showing no cancer. Come on. Come on. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Lord. I want, I want to use this as a moment of encouragement for you. Because some, sometimes you think, when is the answer going to finally come? And for those of you unaware, you weren't here Wednesday, we know that Linda, somebody else in our church, she had a stomach ulcer. She was in the emergency room. She was in the, at the hospital for several days. And she came out because of her blood was not what it was supposed to be. I guess her hemoglobin dropped. But now they can't even find the ulcer. God is good. And the same God that is healing and has healed them can heal your circumstance. You know, it's one of the reasons why I love the series that we're in. I've had people ask, you know, you know, why are we doing so many weeks on life hacks? Well, because you've got so many problems. It's your fault, not mine. All right? You know, we need to learn how to get through things God's way. We need to know how to uh, apply godly principles to challenges that we have in our life. And so life hacks has been one of the ways for us to discuss that. Um, if you don't know what a hack is, I'm not talking about like when I was growing up and they called you a hack. Because that was derogatory. Like you can't play, you're a hack, you know, that sort of stuff. A hack is actually a clever way that we solve problems. All right? So some of you are geniuses out there. You know, uh, they need to do a sitcom just about you because if something happens and you're like the MacGyver of the place, all right, you know how to fix something. And they're called life hacks. And I've shared a couple each week that as I've been walking, as we have been walking through this series together. So today I'll show you a couple, I'll, I'll, I'll share a couple extras. You can write these down. You can try them at home. I'm, you know, the more and more I try them. And, and for those of you that were doubting, all right, this week I had a lot of leg cramps. I don't know why. I, I, my legs were straight and I had my hamstrings cramping. And so then... I would, like, bend it and my quads would cramp. I have no idea. I'm getting old, I guess, all right? You know, you hit a certain age and your body just starts cramping and all of you are, like, going, yes, all right? Well, anyway, so I, I took a tablespoon of mustard. I filled that sucker up and, man, I took it. They went away. Now, I don't know. Maybe it's just a head game. I don't know. We're going to talk about head games today. But it worked. How many of you like cold pizza? Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a few hands that go, I love cold pizza, especially when it's been loaded, lots and lots of cheese. I'll eat it the next day. I love cold pizza, but some of us don't like that. Some people like your pizza hot. Who figured, right? Uh, if you like it hot and it's been cold, it's been sitting in your refrigerator, here would be my encouragement to you, I guess. I learned online that you can put it in a skillet, a hot skillet. Put a tablespoon of water with it, put a lid on it, it comes back to life. Try it. Let me know how it goes. All right, I'm going to show you my pizza cold. How many of you have had hiccups before? Now, I know more of you have had hiccups if you got hands up right now, all right? All right? They say eat a tablespoon of peanut butter, your hiccup goes away. I've been hoping I've had hiccups lately, and I just haven't had them yet. I'm ready to try it because I love peanut butter. And the last one, I, I just don't see how this works, and I don't care how many different remedies or hacks I've tried to do to not cry when I cut onions. But they say if you wet the knife... You won't cry. I think it's a lie of the enemy. You know, somebody in the first service said, well, you just need to douse your head with water and you won't cry. Or nobody will notice you crying. All right, so any of those, hey, those are free. We've been learning how to deal with anxiety, right? How many of those? God wants to help us in every area of your life that you worry. 
There's no need to have anxiety when the Creator God who created everything is in control. Problem is sometimes he's in, He created everything, but we want to be in control instead of allowing Him to be in control. We've talked about how to hack pain, how to hack sadness. We've talked about how to hack finances and stewarding things the way that God wants us to. We've talked about sexual strongholds. We've talked about even marriages and communication last week. What a powerful time. I've had individuals come up to me this week and say, I'm better in my relationships because I'm dealing with me. I'm not trying to change the other person. That's the truth, amen? Well, today we're going to jump back into this. And we're going to ask the Lord to speak to us. And I kind of mentioned earlier that we're going to talk about head games. We're going to hack the head game today. It's so important that we have, especially this week and next week, we're talking about head games this week. We're going to talk about struggles next week. That we get the head game right because our head game is what begins to fashion our behavior. And when we allow the enemy to get into our head and tell us that we're something that we're not or tell us that we're less than we are, we need to allow the Holy Spirit to correct the way that we think so we can become the child of God that he wants us to become. And so head games is, is it's a way that the enemy oftentimes just kind of overwhelms us. You find yourself thinking about 85% of the things that will never happen, right? You ever been in a situation and you start thinking about how everything, all the different things that can go wrong. Anybody done that before? I am so sorry for you. That's, I, I, man, it has to be exhausting to feel that way. But I want you to know that there's a God who doesn't want you to feel that way. A God who wants you to win this head game. He wants you to make a difference. He wants you to see your purpose in life. He wants you to find the freedom that can only be found in Jesus Christ. He wants you to have victory. Anybody ready for to get a few more wins on your resume? Lord, help me win in this circumstance. And God has a plan for every one of us if we would just lean in and ask him to speak to us. Let's ask him to speak to us this morning and get rid of all of those things that hold us back. There's always an area that the enemy wants to target. Let's get rid of everything that holds us back, and let's chase after the plan of, Lord, of the Lord. Amen? Amen. 2 Corinthians, this has been one of our uh, uh, key verses throughout this series. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 to 5 says this. It says, for though we live in the world, we don't wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power. What's he saying? Supernatural power, power from the throne room of God power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. If it's in his word, it's true. Every pretension that sets itself up against the word of God and we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. Lord, reveal yourself in our hearts this morning. Everybody said, amen. I've had, I was in a conversation with somebody this week, and we've talked about strongholds over the last few weeks, and he was talking about, you know, what, how, how do we really, could you define strongholds for me? And so I decided to go back and actually do a little bit of a deep dive on the word stronghold here in the Greek, and I, I came away with two definitions. Let me share the first one with you. A stronghold in your life would be like being a prisoner locked by deception. A prisoner locked in the lies of the enemy. Some of us have believed the enemy so long in our life, it has become normal routine to believe the lie over God's truth. People in your life, parents in your life, leaders in your life, employers in your life will say, you're not good enough. Well, I know that the Word of God says, I'm unique, I'm peculiar, I'm the apple of His eye, I am His child, and He wants to do incredible things in my life. So it's time for us not to listen to the lies of the enemy, which is the head games that he wants to play with us, and it's time for us to start believing in what is true. The second definition I have for you this morning, it's not just being a prisoner locked by deception, because some of us might be saying, well, I'm not a prisoner. 
I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not that deep into that, Pastor Paul. Well, here's another one. Living life by something that's not true. We do it all the time. You know, I've even had people come up to you and say, God told me that I'm supposed to marry so-and-so. Well, I'm, you, you better just dig in and pray, all right? Dig in and pray. God makes what God wants to work, amen? And we, don't, we can't allow the enemy to come in and distract us. We need to focus in on the truth, and then God will reveal those things. Amen? And most of the time, if that was something, I feel like God's told me that I'm supposed to date or see or marry that other person, it might begin with just a conversation. Your first conversation might not say, God told me to marry you. That might be the first way to get somebody to run away. Come on, somebody. <laughs> The reality is, in this relationship that we have with God, it, we need to have our brain rewired. We need to stop thinking, stop fighting like the world thinks and fights, and we need to start examining and studying and believing what the Word of God says over our life. All right, He wants... And if you're, if you're curious or you question this this morning, He wants to set you free. God wants you to have freedom in your life. God wants you to win. And so if you trust that, then you know that you can put every circumstance into His hands. I used this illustration in the first service. I'm going to use it again in this one. You know how they train an elephant? All right, when they're young and when they're first born, they put these heavy chains around their neck, and they stake him to the ground. And so this young elephant learns, he pulls on it, and he can't get away because they've got this heavy chain around him. They've got him chained to a stake. He can't go anywhere. The older and older and the older that the elephant gets, they don't realize that they become stronger and can literally rip the entire tent down. They feel like they're still confined by this little stake. And it can be a wooden stake at that point. Because once you have programmed their brain, they don't try to get away anymore. Some of us have taken the lie of the enemy and allowed that to become the chain around our neck. It weighs us down. It, may be, it might be mistakes that's in your past. It's time that you give it up, you give it to the Lord, and you let it go. You can't fix what's in your past, but you can certainly give God the opportunity to change your future. We need to be willing to take those heavy chains off because the enemy wants you to lose. The enemy wants to stay in your head. The enemy wants to mess you up. The enemy doesn't want you to win. The enemy wants you to be paralyzed by your own thoughts. But God has come to give you life. In fact, life more abundant. If we don't give the Lord the opportunity, here's some things that's going to happen. And some of you have had this already happen to you. If we continue to play the head games that the enemy wants to play in our lives, what's going to happen? Well, number one, we're going to lose our focus. We're not even going to be able to find focus. Well, he's going to steal our focus. And as soon as he can take your mind off the things that God wants to accomplish, guess where your mind is at? It's on the things that we shouldn't do. you got the Apostle Paul in the New Testament saying, why do I do the things I don't want to do, and yet I do the, I'm doing the things I don't want to do, and yet I'm not doing the things that I should do. It's because of this head game that the enemy wants to play in every one of our minds. And we need to be willing to give it up. We need to be, stay focused and stay on the things of God. Head games can cause us to feel controlled. And I can tell you, and maybe all the males in this room is not this way, if there's one feeling that I hate in life, is feeling like people control me. My wife is laughing right now. Or staring at me. One of the two. How, we, do, we don't like being controlled, do we? And yet, at the same time, when we allow the enemy to play a heyday in our minds, what happens? He controls us. We feel like we can't get away. I can't stop doing this. I can't stop saying that. I can't, I can't help it. That's a lie of the enemy. The third thing that head games can do is consume our emotional energy. I bet you there's been times that you've been so consumed by trying to fight the head game of life that you go to bed at night and you don't even want to get out of bed the next day. You are so emotionally exhausted, it doesn't make any difference if your best friend calls you on the phone you're not answering it. 
You're going to put your phone on silent. You're going to put it on side. You're going to fall asleep in your recliner or whatever it is that you find comfortable at home, and you're not going to deal with it. Why? Because your emotional energy have, has been zapped. Head games will do that to you. Sometimes head games will distract us from our purpose. And if you are unaware, every one of us listening online or right here this morning, God has a specific plan for you and your life. All right? And so the enemy tries to shackle us so it detracts us, distracts us from the plan and the purpose that God has for us. What's held in the balance if we don't follow through and allow God's plans to be real and evident in our life? Well, what's really held um, in, in jeopardy here is the people that are watching you that will never discover what Jesus can do in the life because we're stuck in our own mind game. We're not allowing the Lord to take those things away. And every one of us, God has purposed you wherever you are in your sphere of influence to have impact for his kingdom. He wants to use you. Some of you are like, well, I'm not good enough. That's a lie of the enemy. I, I don't know what to say. He'll give you the words to say. Don't believe the lie. It will, dis, it will distract you from his purpose. And the final thing that it does, and this is what's so... If I would have a prayer over our church family, is that every one of us would find the life that can be found in Jesus Christ. But if we play head games, it robs us from abundant life. The Apostle Paul writes the church of Ephesus, chapter 3, verse 20. Look it up. It says that he wants to do more in your life than you could ever ask, imagine, or what? Dream. Some, we got some dreamers in the house. And God wants to do more in your life than even that. But we believe the enemy when he says we're not good enough. I want you to know that God has a life that is perfect for you. It's perfect for your personality. It's perfect for where you are in life right now. It's an abundant life. In fact, another part of Scripture says life to its fullest. In other words, the most fulfilling life that you can have will only be found in this relationship with Jesus. But we can't allow the enemy to detract us, to distract us. We can't allow him to rob us. What's the Scripture say? He's, he waits. He crouches at your door waiting to steal, kill, and destroy, right? We can't allow the enemy to come in and interrupt the incredible things that God is doing. Paul, uh, he's the Apostle Paul. He um, writes his protege, Timothy, and he, he writes him a couple letters. You, you'll find them in the New Testament. Um, and in 2 Timothy chapter 2, he begins to address some things that we know were real for Timothy to have to deal with, not just in Timothy's life, but who Timothy was ministering to. And he begins to, to describe a couple things. And in the beginning of this chapter, he says, Timothy, uh, we have to learn to flee evil desires. How many of you know that evil desires is the head game that the enemy wants to play in our mind? If he can consume you with evil desires, you can't find the life that's on the other side of doing it Jesus' way. He says you have to flee evil desires. And then, I love, hey, some of you need to write down in your notes, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Go home, this is what it, he encourages us. He says, don't get involved in stupid arguments. You're welcome. Go home right now. If that's all you hear today, don't get involved in stupid arguments. The only person that you have the power through Christ to change is yourself. So you offering some words of wisdom to somebody who doesn't really care what your words of wisdom are is not benefiting the kingdom. But if we can model the kingdom, model what Jesus can do in a life, you watch and see the supernatural the things that begin to take place. Don't, he says, don't get involved in stupid arguments. I think that's a moment in my life I said, I need to be Jesus instead of talk about Jesus. Make sense? I need to be Jesus. I need to love them the way that Jesus loves me and allow the Holy Spirit to do the talking. And then he, go, and he says this, he goes, the results of that would be perhaps that God would grant them repentance. In other words, maybe they will see something in my life Maybe they will see something in your life that leads them to a life of repentance and they give their heart and their life to Jesus. That's what Paul tells Timothy. 
He goes, hey, if you want to have it, if you want to have a growing, thriving congregation, you want to have a growing, uh, thriving group of people that are chasing after Jesus, it begins. Don't get involved in stupid arguments. Be Jesus and watch the Holy Spirit transform the lives around you. Pretty cool recipe, would you agree? And then he says this, and this is where I'm going, verse 26. He's talking about those people. He says, they will come to their senses and escape the trap of the devil. Who has taken them, get this, captive to do his will. Only the Holy Spirit can heal us from the evil desires and the way that he has consumed our minds in our past. And he's faithful and just to do it when we ask. Let's win these head games. Let's hack the head game. Come on, somebody. Now, before I jump into the three points that are going to help us navigate through this, let let me talk about one of my own struggles, and maybe you can identify with this. I'm an individual that, I told you earlier, I don't like being controlled, but Lord, you control me, please, all right? Kicking and screaming, I don't care, make me do what you want me to do, all right? But I'm a person who likes taking matters in my own hands. Anybody else here? Any fixers in the house? Now, you might not have raised your hand, but your spouse just looked at you if you're a fixer. They just looked at you right now and said, yeah, you try to fix everything. I've even had moments in my life that Debbie's literally looked at me and goes, I'm going to tell you something. And I need you to decide right now not to fix it. I just need to talk. <laughs> Don't fix it. <laughs> our, man, our marriage is awesome now, all right? <laughs> And so in Luke, Dr. Luke captures a thought here that's applicable to our our time together and this subject this morning, if we're going to hack the head game, Dr. Luke says this in the message version, because I love the message version, in chapter 11, verses 21 and 22, because it kind of captures me. Man, man, I'm ready to fight. If that's what it takes, I'm I'm ready to, I'm all in. I'm going to do this. He says, when a strong man, not that I'm a strong man, but you know what I mean, right? When a strong man, armed to the teeth, stands guard in his front yard, his property is safe and sound. That's right, Rambo here, right? Man, I I am armed to the teeth, I'm ready to defend. Anybody out there? But then he offers this thought. But what if a stronger man comes along? And I know all of you looked at me like that. Nobody's stronger than you, Pastor Paul. And I really appreciate that. I really do. All right. What if a stronger man comes along with superior weapons? Oh, you got a knife. You brought a knife to a gunfight. Then he's beaten at his own game. When we try to do things our way, we're going to find ourselves beaten at our own game. The arsenal that gave him such confidence is hauled off and his precious possessions are plundered. And the enemy is wreaking havoc in people's minds. He's wreaking havoc and he's causing us to lose everything that God has so wonderfully designed for our lives. He wants to move on our behalf. He loves you more than anyone could ever possibly begin to fathom how much they can love you. He loves you more than we could ever even comprehend. And he wants to move in your life. And it's about time for his church to get out of survival mode and start fighting the lies of the enemy and winning this head game. It's time for us to win this game It's not about the weapons of this world. If you're in an argument and you want to fight the way that the world fights, I can promise you it's going to end badly. But if you invite the voice and the presence of the Holy Spirit into your circumstance, He will give you wisdom beyond your life experience, beyond your years, and He will guide you through difficult conversations. Why? Because He loves you that much. It's not about the weapons of this world. And I don't know about you, I'd like to have a little bit more freedom in my life. Right? Anybody want a little bit more victory in your life? I'm thankful that God allowed me to have a certain level of freedom in in, in many areas of my life that not only have I experienced the blessing of that freedom, but my kids are experiencing the blessing of that freedom. And now my grandkids, yes, I'm a grand, I I might not look that, I got five grandkids, all right? 
And they are going to experience the blessings of that as well. What God can do in you is going to last for generations. Don't get caught up in the generation that went before you that did not model Christ. Decide today that you're going to be the generation that models Christ. And you're going to hack these head games. Let me give you three truths real quick. Three truths real quick. Number one, if you're going to hack the head game, you're going to have to take back your thought life. Take back your thought life. I'm going to introduce a principle I talk about a couple times a year. All of us should make a practice of fasting in our life. Not only is it good for your digestive system, I mean, this is studies, medical studies have shown that fasting can be beneficial. I'm talking about the kind of fasting that removes distractions from your life. See, fasting is not always food. For some of us, fasting might be social media. You're spending hours on Facebook or hours on Instagram. You're believing everything that you see online instead of believing the truth that God has given us to us in plain sight. You're going to have to take control of your thought life. No longer can the enemy control what it is you're thinking. And though you're like, well, that doesn't control me. I can promise you when you're on social media and you watch a thousand videos and you send them to five, six different people... It impacts the way that you think. It impacts the way that you feel. And I'm telling you, it would be a healthy diet to fast some of those things during periods of your life. Some of us, as as harsh as this might sound or as difficult as this might sound, we might even need to fast some relationships we have in our life. You know when you hang out with somebody, you're a different person. You're here in church, and we're talking, it's high-fiving, and, and you're loving Jesus, and you go home, and you hang out, or you go to the workplace, you begin to work, uh, uh, hang out with somebody, and all of a sudden, all this good stuff that Jesus is doing is gone, and you're talking about all the negative stuff that's going on around you. Some of us need to fast some relationships. And maybe, if we don't get caught up in stupid arguments... God might grant them repentance and see what they can have if they would just give their heart to Jesus the way that you have. Paul says this when he writes the Church of Rome. He says, those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. And he's talking, yes, please the Holy Spirit, please God for the work that he's doing inside of you. But let me compound that. It also pleases your spirit. Your soul will be pleased. And if your sinful nature controls your mind, there is death. You entertain a thought long enough, what does it do? It leads to sin. And sin can wreak havoc in marriages, relationships, and finances, every area of your life. But if the Holy Spirit controls your mind, what does he say? There is life and peace. Who wants life and peace? I'd like to have an extra dose of life and peace. I would like to know that no matter what circumstance the enemy wants to throw my way, I can rest in the peace of God knowing that he's in control even when I feel like I'm out of control. And... I can have a life that is fulfilled, an abundant life that lets me know that the contentment of my life is not based on what I have. It's based on the work that Jesus is doing. I want to give everything to him. The important thing here is that I'm listening to the right voice. I'm not listening to the voices and all the white noise around me. I'm listening to the voice of God. Later, in chapter 12... Uh, Verse 2, Paul gives us the remedy of this. He says, don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but allow God to transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think. I've said this often. If you want to change your behavior, change your thought process. If you allow the Holy Spirit to change the way that you think, it'll change your behavior and the way that you act. The more and more I understand the love of God, the more and more I'm allowed and I'm able to display, I have the capacity to display the love of God in my life. It's just something that goes hand in hand. God is the one that transformed me into this new person. How? By winning the head game, giving it to him, and not allowing the enemy to wreak havoc in my mind. 
when we fast, and I'm going to go back to that subject because I think all of us this week should fast something. If you want to win the head game, it removes your distraction and you seek Jesus. This is not in your notes, but some of you are going to want to write this down. We will never change our life until we change the way that we think. You will never change your life until you change your head game. The Holy Spirit wants to change it. Amen? Number two, we're going to take back our thought life. Number two is my encouragement to you is to stop believing the lie and identify the lie. Identify the lie. Identify the area of your life that the enemy is stealing from you. Ideal, uh, identify the area of your life that he is holding you hostage. He is holding you as a prisoner of your own deception. Find the area of your life that he is lying to you and you are not experiencing the kind of abundant life that God has for you. Identify it. The enemy is going to wreak havoc. He's going to lie over and over and over again. He, if there's anything that he wants for you is that your life is a mess. And when your life is a mess and you're trying to think about all the things that are wrong, you can't think about, you don't have the capacity to think about all the things that he wants to do. Got to reframe the way that we think. So my question, what lie are you believing today? Where is it? I would encourage you to do something. I would encourage you to write it down on a piece of paper on or a note card, on a post-it, I don't care. Stick it in an envelope. The area of your life that you feel like the enemy is lying and you're having a hard time with, stick it in an envelope and seal it. Maybe stick it inside your Bible to remind you to read the, the God's Word. And you begin to read God's Word on that subject. Hey, Google is... Man, it can be a mess on a lot of things, but it's also a benefit sometimes. You're struggling with anxiety. Google, hey, Lord, uh, how can I biblically overcome? What Bible verses will help me overcome anxiety in my life? And you're going to get all of these websites that you can read all of these Bible verses and begin to pray those Bible verses over your circumstance. Don't believe the lie of the enemy. Believe what God's Word says. And as you put that in that envelope, here in a couple months, you take it out. And you know that you got victory. You know that you have freedom. Why? Because the Holy Spirit showed up and you got into God's word and your life was transformed. Identify the lie. Now John says this. This is how he describes Satan. This is what he says. He says, when the devil lies, this is chapter 8, verse 44. When the devil lies, he speaks his native language. Ever meet somebody like that? It's like every time they open up their mouth, it's like a lie's coming out. Or is that... That's probably too sensitive. My bad. All right. He's speaking his native language. For he is a liar and the father of lies. He wants to distract you. He wants to rob you of your blessing. He wants to keep you from having fulfillment in your life. But if you can give your head game to the Holy Spirit, you're going to win this battle. My weapons are not of this world but they demolish strongholds when I begin to pray and to believe what God's Word says over me. Maybe write this down in your notes. When you expose the lie, you defeat the liar. When you expose your lie, the lie of the enemy that he's trying to speak over your life, when you expose the lie, you will defeat the liar. Amen? And the last one. You're going to take back your thought life. Identify the lie. And number three, we're going to replace the lie with God's truth. There's no way that I could even preach this message without repetitively saying we've got to believe what God's Word says. We live in a day and a culture that doesn't believe what God's Word says. As culture begins to change, it doesn't mean that God's Word changes. We need to trust and believe what God's Word says over everything else in our life. You might even have a real smart person with good intentions trying to give you advice. If it does not line up with God's Word, you run from it, you don't listen to it, and you do things the way that God's Word says. And when we do that, when we replace the lie with God's truth, He gives us the strength to overcome it. So what does God's Word say in your circumstance? 
The Apostle Paul writes the church of Ephesus and tells us we should put on the full armor of God. That we should have the belt of truth. In other words, God's truth over everything else. Breastplate of righteousness. It's Jesus being displayed. He is the one that makes me righteous. Amen? He says we'd have the shoes of peace. It says we should have faith. It says we should put on the helmet of salvation. Well, when we do all of those things, it prepares us to go to battle, right? Because those are the items that protect us from the lie of the enemy. However, he doesn't stop there. He gives us an offensive weapon. So let's go. Let's go. Ephesians chapter 6, verses it's, I'm only going to read a portion of the verses between 10 and 18 when he's talking about the armor of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord in his mighty power. Do you say your mighty power? Do you say Pastor Paul's mighty power? Do you say the church's mighty power? He said be strong in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's head games. That's my version this morning. The devil's schemes. The devil's head games. Take, and then he gives you us our, our offensive weapon. Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and pray. God's Word, I'm going to pray. God's Word, I'm going to believe, I'm going to pray. God's Word, I'm going to believe, I'm going to pray. It's going to change the way that I think. God's Word, I'm going to believe, I'm going to pray. It's going to change the way that I think. And then all of a sudden, all of my behavior begins to change because I'm doing things God's way. He wants to move in our heart and our life. And if there's a time for the church to go on the offense, and I'm talking about going on the offense of applying his word over our life and applying his love to the lives around there, outside, it's change everything. It will change everything. Amen? I don't know where you struggle. And it's probably good that I don't know all of your struggles. It's probably good that you don't know all of my struggles. I just hope I'm not your struggle. <laughs> but I know a God that does. I know a God that knows every detail of your life. And if there's anybody that wants you to win, nobody wants you to win more than Jesus does. Even to the point of death, he's willing to die on the cross so you can have victory, you can have freedom, and you can have the joy that can only come from a life devoted to Jesus. Amen? Would you bow your heads with me this morning? We serve a big God, and I don't know what baggage or head game that the enemy wants you to carry around, but I know that there, there is a Lord in our life that can change it all. He can take your depression and give joy. He can take your stronghold and give you victory. He can take your addiction and bring freedom. He can take your broken relationship and develop a relationship of a lifetime. When we do things His way, it changes the game. And if He can create the world, He can create a way for you to win. But the reality is this, is if you really want to experience life to its fullest, or what the Bible says, abundant life, it will always begin with giving your heart to Jesus. That's where it always begins. It doesn't begin with you trying to do it yourself. It doesn't begin with you getting 20 people's advice. It begins with you giving your heart to Jesus. That's always your first step. If you want to make that decision this morning, I would be honored. I would be blessed to pray with you. We'll say a short prayer, and if you mean it in your heart, today will be a new chapter, a new trajectory in your life because you said yes to him. I'm simply going to count to three. I won't embarrass you. Lift your hand and say, I want to give my heart to Jesus, and then we're going to pray together, and then we're going to celebrate. Amen? One, two, three. Heart to Jesus this morning. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Had a couple in the first service raise their hand. What a blessing oh, God is doing in the life of our church. Anybody else?
Church family, would you say this prayer with me? Say, Lord God. Come on, say it loud. Say, Lord God, I give you my heart. Will you transform it? I give you my mind. Would you renew it? Help me think about things and my life the way that you do. Help me to give it to you and allow you to change everything. I ask today that you would forgive me of all of my sin. Every mistake, every harsh word, and give me a brand new start. I give you my future. Become so real that I can win these head games. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. Let's celebrate. Come on. Church, let's take off the shackles. Let's go on offense. And let's allow the Holy Spirit to do a work in our life. Amen. I pray that the Lord blesses you. I pray that he keeps you. I pray that the face of God would shine upon you. And he would be so gracious to us that we would experience supernatural peace. In Jesus' name, everyone said.